So you're running Unify at home and you want to extend your network. You've run Ethernet to your most critical things in your home. And for your wireless devices, you set up Unify Access Point. But what about all those hard to reach places? The places you want to run Ethernet but can't pull a wire? Well, bridging networks with a couple of Unify APs is what we're going to talk about today. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about setting up your Unify Access Points in bridge mode. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you want to continue the conversation about Unify Access Points there, we can. So let's talk about bridging a couple of networks. So why would you want to bridge networks over wireless? There are many use cases for this, but most of the ones I see are for connecting a printer wirelessly, throwing one behind your TV to connect all your devices to, attaching a camera directly to it to give it wireless capability, putting it on your workbench to give all your devices their network access, or, in my case, using it as a bridge to my detached garage. So I have a detached garage and I have some cameras in there. Those cameras are all wired PoE cameras that attach to a PoE switch. That switch delivers power and network to the devices. And from there, they uplink to a Linksys router. And this Linksys router is running DDWRT. I set up DDWRT on that device years ago. And that device is now a client to my other Ubiquiti access point. And from there, I bridged the two networks. That bridge has been working great for about four or five years. But lately, the device has been showing its age. Some of my cameras go offline and sometimes the whole entire router disconnects from my network. And although it served me well for four or five years, it's time to make an upgrade. Now I know what you're thinking, you're probably wondering why I would buy another Unify AC Pro. And I looked at many other options before doing this. And ultimately, I settled on getting another one of these for a couple of reasons. First, I can manage it just like my other Unify devices. I get all of the features that I get from my Unify network. Firmware updates, provisioning, metrics, monitoring, you name it. Next is just the dependability of these devices. These devices for me have been rock solid and enterprise grade. I installed one in my home and I've had zero problems with it whatsoever. Which leads me to my third reason is that I only have one in my home. The nice part about picking up another one of these devices is that in the future, if I no longer need to create a bridge, I can just use this as another access point within my house. And so it provides a ton of flexibility for the future. And if you're running Unify, you already know this. So what are we going to do today? Well, so in today's video, we're going to set up a second wireless AP from Ubiquiti as a wireless bridge. That will help us bridge the network over wireless so that all devices connected to it can use Ethernet. And then we can plug anything we want to into that switch. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your Unify network is running. Once it is, you'll want to go into Devices. Here, you should see your existing access point. The next thing you'll want to do is get your new access point ready. Once you see your existing access point, not the new one, we need to check a couple of settings. Once you go into Settings, under Site, if you're in the Classic view, you'll want to make sure that the Uplink Connectivity Monitor is turned on. That's this setting right here. If you're running the newer menu, you'll want to go to Wi-Fi Networks, Advanced, and make sure the uplink connectivity monitor is toggled on. If those aren't, apply them and reprovision your device. Next, you'll want to make sure that your new device is in factory default settings. So after you unbox it, the only thing you'll want to do is plug in the PoE injector to power. From there, you'll want to connect an Ethernet cable to the PoE port on the PoE injector. and then plug that into the main port of your new access point. From there, you'll see a solid LED that will start flashing. And just a reminder, we should only have one cable plugged into our PoE injector and that's the one providing power. Then, in the Devices tab, we should see this new device show up. This should be in a pending adoption state. So let's select that device, and here we can see it's pending adoption in wireless mode. So let's adopt it. Then it should start provisioning this device. Eventually, it will switch to connected. Now you may notice in between it might say isolated, but it should end up being connected. So let's give it a name. And now's a good time to update the device if it has updated firmware available. Upgrade Rover. So now the firmware is up to date. 
Now, feel free to change any settings you typically change for your new access points. Now would be a good time to ping this device. And as you can see, this device is up and running. So this is really awesome. Now our Ubiquiti access point is actually a client to our other access point. And from here, we can connect another device to our secondary port. Let's connect another device and do a throughput test. So to do this, you'll want to connect an Ethernet cable to the secondary port on your AP. From there, you'll run that Ethernet cord to your other device. Then you can start pinging that device and it should start responding. So on the left side, I'm pinging our access point, And on the right side, I'm pinging the client that's connected directly to that access point on the secondary port. So this is a good sign. This means we have network connectivity to the secondary port. Now let's really run our speed test. As a test, I'm going to transfer a 25 gig file to that device that's on the other side of that access point. And here we go. So on the left side is a video on this machine. And the right side is that client machine that's connected to the secondary port. And now I'm transferring this 25 gig video at about 50 megabytes per second. So that's roughly 400 megabit. So worth mentioning, my primary access point is about 30 feet from this new access point. And there's a couple walls in between. And also, it's serving the rest of my wireless network right now. So I think this is pretty good throughput, especially for what I'm going to use it for. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use this for three cameras connected to Blue Iris that I can't pull an Ethernet cable to. And 400 megabit is plenty of bandwidth for these cameras. And a lot more bandwidth than my current Linksys router can handle. And so this is a really nice option for me. It's a great gap solution to provide Ethernet to a remote site. And that remote site is just my garage. And as I said before, it provides a ton of flexibility. So if one day I run ethernet to my garage, I can repurpose this access point for something else. And at the end of the day, my cameras are back online and stable. So what do you think about bridging two Unify AC Pro access points? Would you have done something different or not even tried this at all? What creative ways can you use this? Do you have some places in your house where ethernet is hard to reach and this might help? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So, thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. I, I try to keep this channel open to what people want to talk about. And what I've realized um, by having this, this channel, it, it, it allows people to talk um, and meet with people they normally wouldn't get to meet or interact with um, who, who are interested in similar things. And I, I've said this before, um, but that's how it's been for me for uh, a long time in my life. You know, I, I rarely meet anyone who likes to, you know, build a server in their basement, who likes to host stuff, who cares enough about their code to, to build it and host it in their own home to set up Kubernetes in their own home, to set up FreeNAS in their home, you know, to have a virtual server, to have all of this networking equipment. You know, it's, it's I, you know, I've, I've probably met uh, in, in real life, only one other person, and he was inspired by what I was doing and wanted to start doing it. Um, and so for me, um, I, I kind of just keep this channel open to what people want to talk about. And that's why you'll see threads of conversations of other people who are just, having conversations because I, I want to keep this channel open for people um and so i don't i don't mean to get all like you know super sentimental but um i found that uh, i i i enjoy allowing people to talk about what their project is and what they have going on because you know some people need that kind of outlet and to be able to talk to people and say or or just even you know being able to tell someone because like i said for Many years of my life, I had no one to tell this stuff to. I mean, I've been doing HomeLab before HomeLab was called HomeLab. I've been self-hosting before self-hosting was a subreddit, before Reddit even exists, you know what I mean? And so I had no one to tell ever <laughs> for many years of my life to build, you know, that, hey, I built this stuff. The, the only way that people would know is like, hey, I'm, I'm hosting my own blog. You should go and check it out, you know? And so... So for a long time, um, you know, that, that, that didn't exist. And so I, you know, when I started this channel and I started the YouTube channel, I just decided that like, um, I'm going to let people talk about what they want to talk about. <laughs> Cause I realized, you know, there's, 
you know, probably 10 years of my life where I'm building and hosting and doing stuff that I never told anyone about ever, ever. Like all, the stuff that I have on YouTube and the stuff that I have on Twitch aren't things I just learned yesterday. Well, some of the Kubernetes stuff hosting at home, that's super tough stuff. But most of the stuff isn't things I just learned last week. They've, they're things I've been doing for, you know, or, or, or something in that, that area for, you know, 10 years ish, you know, or something, you know, uh, along those lines and going all the way back to when I was telling you, Hey, I started out in tech support. That's where I got my first home lab computer it was a computer destined for the trash. And I said, asked my manager at the time, can I take this home? And he was like, that thing is so old. Why do you want it? <laughs> and I said, well, I want to, I want to learn. I want to, I want to run a server. I want a file server at home. And he was like, just take the hard drive out. 